setting was organized by Cyber Salon of the Center for Study of Democracy at the University of Westminster. It's supported by the Creative Depart Media Department at Middlesex University. And thanks are due to Hydro 66, it says here, and Wikipedia for ongoing support for Cyber Salon. Now, Cyber Salon, for those of you that don't know, was, which has actually concluded me a little earlier, um, I didn't realize it was as old as having been founded in 1997 by Ava Pasco, who was the founder of Britain's first internet cafe in 1994, and Richard Barbrook, and also, I think, some others. And um, for the last three years, Cyber Salon has been running monthly events uh, talking about various aspects of the future of the internet, sort of trying to learn from the past in order to create a better future. Um, today's event focuses on surveillance and data privacy and also on digital citizenship because it marks the beginning of a project, a six-month project that Cyber Salon is undertaking to write a bill of rights for digital citizens. Um, this project is has come about partly as in response to three recent reports. One is the somebody has windows. <laughs> <laughs> One of, them, one of them is the 2009 Digital Britain Report, which led to the Digital Economy Act. Um, one is uh, the Speaker of the House, John Burko's um, report on digital democracy. And the third is last week's Intelligence and Security Committee's report on surveillance in this country. Uh, there are lots of reasons to be concerned about all of them. The, Digital Britain report really didn't think of digital citizens as much as di digital consumers. And it's really wasting the potential of the internet if, if all of the policies about it see us as people who are going to sit in our houses and watch content and read things that have been created by others as if it were a giant television. Um, Burkhoff's report favored digital democracy, uh, but again, you know, in order to have digital democracy, we have, there have to have the right kinds of tools and policies to support it. Uh, the internet is not a combination of a giant postal service and telephone. Um, and the ISC report seemed to think surveillance was okay. So we're going to have a number of speakers today. We've got... Um, too many pieces of paper. We've got Richard Barbrook, who is a senior lecturer in the School of Social Sciences, Humanities, and Languages at the University of Westminster. He is author of the 2008 book, Imaginary Futures, From Thinking Machines to the Global Village. And in his academic work, he studies the framework of what digital citizenship means for a network society. Uh, we have the Labor MP, Tom Watson, who is the MP for West Bromwich East, which someday you're going to have to explain to me. <laughs> uh, and um, the Sun has called him a fundamentalist zealot, which I think sounds wonderful, uh, presumably for pursuing phone hacking in the way you, you did. Um, Carl Miller is co-founder and director of the Center for the Analysis of Social Media at the Demos Think Tank. He is co-author of several research reports, including T Truth, Lies, and the Internet, The Power of Unreason, and Hash Intelligence, the first framework for the ethical and effective collection of social media intelligence for public security. He is a media, media commentator and researcher on social media, and is leading a project to build tools to support digital democracy. Uh, Mark Cridge is head of digital strategy for the Green Party. He is senior advisor for Blue State Digital, which provided digital strategy services for President Obama's uh, successful campaigns, and a founder of Blue, the UK's first digital ad agency. So basically, you're the devil, really, in, in, in green disguise. And uh, we have Birgitta Jansdottir, who will be by Skype later on, who has been a member of the Icelandic Parliament since 2009, where she represents the Pirate Party, which is now Iceland's largest and most popular political party. At the EU level, she has campaigned to improve surveillance and personal data protection.